<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video. It's not necessarily a tutorial, but it's also not necessarily news, and I don't know, I, I guess we'll kind of just roll with it and see what's going on. Today I'm talking about the Xbox 360 again, because there is something that ended up getting updated pretty recently, and I wanted to bring it to you all's attention, and it doesn't just have to do with the Xbox 360, it has to do with the, uh, Xbox One as well, or Xbox, original Xbox, why did, why did you do that, Microsoft? For anyone who does not know, the Xbox 360, as long as you have a hard drive and are connected to Xbox Live to download a update, has a Xbox emulator on it, an original Xbox emulator. That means that you're able to take original Xbox discs such as this and play them on your Xbox 360. While this was great back in the day when people were transitioning over to the Xbox 360, and I'm sure that helped some people, you know, kind of put their minds at ease and sell off their original Xboxes and be able to afford their 360, um, it can be hit or miss. First of all, it is emulation that you are dealing with, so it's not going to be perfect. I'm sure at this point now, funny enough, more people would prefer to play original Xbox games on the original Xbox as opposed to 360, but mind you, this is more of a selling point that Microsoft would update over time. However, they only updated it for about two years. That's not to say they didn't support it, but from 2005 to 2007, they ended up adding a bunch of games to it, and at least for the NTSCU library, they have just over half of the games available. So that means that there's a ton of original Xbox games that work on the Xbox 360 just fine, but there's also a good amount that are not going to work on there. The ones that don't work could be for various different reasons. Some of them will simply crash, some of them will have crazy glitches all over the place, some of them might be unplayable past a certain point, and some of them work perfectly fine. Which is what's frustrating, if this game works fine, why isn't it on the official Xbox backwards compatibility list? Well, that's where modders ended up taking over. You see, people who had development kits, who had JTAG systems at the time, and now I'd even say, you know, reset glitch hacked systems. Point is, if you had a modified, a hard modded Xbox 360, you were actually able to take a little more control over this list that was curated. You see, the original Xbox backwards compatibility files were whitelist based, meaning that a game like Halo 2 would have to work on this. I actually, I'm not even kidding. Halo and Halo 2 were the two like bare minimum games that had to work right out of the gate on this. But point is, if you pop in a Halo 2 disc, it'll check, and if it's available on that whitelist, it will work. However, there's multiple other games where if you pop it into your Xbox 360, and even if you have the latest updates and you're online, if it's not on that whitelist, you are not able to play that game. But what if we can trick it? In comes two things, an application, and a modification of sorts that are pretty important to this. First of all, by XE Dev, they end up releasing the hard drive compatibility fixer. Now, someone by the name of Zor Loser ended up taking these backwards compatibility files and modified them to be completely whitelisted, as well as with a few other things as well, too. Hence comes the term the hacked backwards compatibility files. And in short, these will allow you to boot up any original Xbox game on the Xbox 360 if your system is hard modded. You do have to have your original Xbox backwards compatible partition set up, and you also need to have this modified backwards compatibility update installed on there. It's all incredibly simple to do, and we're good at that point. But the thing is, why am I talking about this now? Well, you see, in April 2018, there were reports that backwards compatibility on the Xbox 360 got updated. Remember how I said that it wasn't that it wasn't supported anymore, but it wasn't being updated? Yeah, this was very weird, because the last update to the original Xbox backwards compatibility was made in 2007. So about 11 years later, there's an update that goes out for some reason. And the worst thing about this too, was that there were a lot of people claiming that there was an update, speculating there was an update, wondering what might be different, but nobody really bothered to check it for sure. And I'm, I'm kind of guilty of this as well. I easily could have checked it and I didn't. My bad. 
I was I was messing with original Xbox, okay? Not so much original Xbox on the 360. But what happened was about a year and a half after this update went out, uh, one person by the name of Matthew LH, that's his username, and I'm going to refer to him as Matthew through the rest of this. If his username sounds familiar, you might know him through the PlayStation modding scene, specifically more the PSP modding scene. He's done a lot of great work over there, but he ended up getting a hold of the latest update from April of 2018, and he was able to crack it open and modify it and essentially take, you know, all of the benefits we got from the whitelisted package and move them over to the 2018 update, which is great. But then there were a few more things he added in as well too. Now I was actually following Matthew when all of this was happening here, but as you can see, he said at this point, I just patched the 2018 Xbox compatibility update to work on Xbox 360 development kits, RGH, JTAG without region, media, signature, whitelist checks, and so on. Enjoy, I guess. <laughs> and as you can see, this is the exact version. It was 5832, which is what the patch was updated to. That is now the actual highest build of this backwards compatible file. Now, the reason why I'm showing his Twitter is because when I was following him when this happened, and I'm still following him, obviously, he kept issuing updates and updates and more updates, and then something else happened. You see, he ended up bringing the guide onto these files as well. And in comes the README that ended up coming with this, the original 2007 version of course by Zor Loser, and then the 2018 version by Matthew LH. Now as you can see, these are the things that this package does, but then Matthew LH also not only updated this to be for the 2018 standard, but it also has in-game HUD support and cross in-game voice chat. Now, the problem is with the voice chat thing, that hasn't been tested fully, so your mileage may vary on that. But yes, at this point now, you can access the in-game HUD. And by in-game HUD, we mean the guide. For anybody who needs a refresher course, when you take your original Xbox game and pop it into your 360, you end up hitting the guide button right here on the controller, and guess what? You don't have access to anything, and the only thing you can really do is shut down your Xbox. Or you can go back, or you can, I guess, go back to the main dashboard itself. The point is, you have no access to any of the settings there. And this update ends up bringing them. Therefore, that's why I wanted to make this video, because this actually introduces new functionality to the Xbox 360, at least hard modded systems, that we haven't seen until now. This is awesome. Now, for anybody who's wanting to know a quick basic rundown of how to set this up, it's extremely simple. First of all, you need a hard modded Xbox 360. 360. That means you need a console that is capable of running homebrew and unsigned code and all that fun stuff. Then there's two applications that you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need the hard drive partition fixer, and you're going to need these latest updated files. So first of all, you just take the hard drive fixer and launch it on this Xbox 360. What's going to do is it's going to create and carve out the partition needed for original Xbox backwards compatibility in case it's not there. And this is going to also wipe that partition. It's not that big of a deal, but that's just a warning just so you know. Once that's done, you need to restart your console, and from there, you go in and you take the updated backwards compatible files and copy them into your HDDX partition so the compatibility folder shows up there. Thanks to Matthew's update here, you have access to regular files, which is just going to update everything to the latest April 2018 build, or you can get the further modified ones, which are going to add in in-game chat and the guide. So you can pick whichever you want. I was personally using the guide because that's what excited me the most. And with that about two minutes of work done, I popped in my original Xbox games on my 360 and I was able to use the full guide while playing those games. It was great. Now, granted, you might run into a few issues. Personally, when I tried to load up my achievements on my profile, I end up getting a fatal crash. So just be careful in regards to things like that. Now, you really have nothing to lose by installing this update, so I'd recommend doing it if you have a hard-modded Xbox 360 of any kind that you're utilizing. And the best part is, as well too, at least to me, I kind of took it back to about 2005-2007 years, 
and decided to try out listening to some music while I was playing my games. I did have to grab a physical CD because I was having difficulty loading up any type of MP3 media off of a flash drive, but lo and behold, once I copied my Panzer Dragoon Orta over to my internal drive and popped in my CD, well, I was able to listen to some really awesome and sad emo music while playing Panzer Dragoon Orta. Oh, and not just Orta. Remember, Orta also comes with a full port of the original Panzer Dragoon. So I did the same thing on there too, and it, it still worked pretty well. Now the best thing is, since this is a simple update, it is building upon previous things that the previous hacked compatibility files had. So therefore, here's the things that you're also going to have included at a bare minimum. XBE signature checks removed, XBE section hash checks removed, game region checks removed, game media checks removed, debug dev kit XBE supported, as well as attempts to play unsupported games, which is the main reason why we are trying to do this. So yes, while the two games I did test this with are not games that are not on the whitelist and they work regularly, the cool thing is, I now have guide access on them, so I can listen to all the sad music I want to while playing original Xbox games. This is like the perfect dream back in 2005. Except now we have HDMI, so it's even better. Now let's circle back to the update itself. Why did Microsoft decide to update this after 11 years? Well, I've been showing you all the whole time. Panzer Dragoon Orta. I'm not just showing you all this because it's a good game and because it's a good deal because it has the original Panzer Dragoon on it. Seriously, seriously, get this game if you haven't picked it up. It's fantastic. But the reason why this update came out is because of Panzer Dragoon Orta. You see, I had read this online, but apparently what happened in April of 2018, Panzer Dragoon Orta became a backwards compatible title on the Xbox One, meaning that you can play the Xbox One version of this game on your Xbox One. That's not confusing at all. Now, the reason why the 360 update happened is because apparently the PAL version of Panzer Dragoon Orta, so not this particular one I'm holding, but the PAL version of it had issues with crashing and apparently you could not finish the game on the Xbox 360. And that was remedied after 11 years. That was finally remedied. So if you are a person who wants to play a PAL version of Panzer Dragoon Orta, you have to get this update. So that's about it for this update. I do want to thank a few people who are involved with this. First of all, if you all are watching, XE Dev for the original hard drive partition fixer tools, Zor Loser for his original work on this, and of course Matthew for issuing the 2018 update and redoing all this. And of course, adding functionality. This is the big thing for me, all right? At this point, we are still adding in functionality to the Xbox 360. Yes, you can say that it's a stock feature on there, but it really isn't. On any stock Xbox 360 or even a dev kit, you can't launch the Xbox 360 guide in original Xbox games. And now you can thanks to these files. It's fantastic. I'm going to have all the relevant links down below in the description if you all want to check this out yourself or if you want to reach out to Matthew and thank him for his work that he did so I can continue talking about the Xbox 360 this late into its life cycle. It's great. I I really do like the Xbox 360 quite a bit. It, it means a lot to me for the channel and such so that's why if I can talk about something like this I do. It makes me happy. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.